Hello and welcome again, listeners, to the second episode of the Reward Navigator series podcast. We are joined today as well with Bruce and PJ, Chief People Officer and respectively the Director for Reward, talking about some aspects that we think are interesting from the research. Today, we're talking about balancing reward budgets and corporate health with well-being, financial well-being. Welcome, Bruce and PJ. So we're talking about corporate well-being, financial health versus individual. Um, one of the things that we saw in the research uh, that we wanted to mention is 43% of employers struggles to balance the attractive rewards with manageable labor costs. Bruce, balancing financial health of the organization and employee financial well-being is indeed challenging. How do we do that or how do we try to attack that uh, issue at SD Works? Yeah. It's. Uh, I'm not surprised by the 43%. but mm -hmm. thought it would even be much higher mm -hmm. because it is. Every balance is not an easy one uh, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we try to do that? Is uh, you stick to a reward strategy overall. Mm -hmm. You share that, and then you try to optimize as much as possible and take the feedback of our people. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, you need to be uh, very good in listening uh, in that one, and then also taking it. A step further than purely the reward compensation mm -hmm. benefits. Yes, that's a financial health, but uh, atmosphere, ABC, atmosphere, benefits, and compensation. Uh, for us, the three uh, are equally important in our fair and care strategy. If you take it at that level, that's the right level to have a conversation uh, where mm -hmm. you also can see as an employer, where do we invest in? How much money do we put into it? And then as an employee, what do I take away from it as financial well-being? But of course, also, uh, how do I feel uh, in the culture of the company and can I be at my best potential, yes or no? Okay. So does that mean that we balance, can we be fair towards the employees and can we be affordable to the organization? Is that the balance that we're trying to make, which is affordable and which is fair at yes. the same time? Yes. And then being very open towards all the elements. I will mm -hmm. give an example. In our own um, HR, which we call our own people team, mm -hmm. yeah, you obviously you have a process of a yearly uh, salary cycle mm -hmm. and salary increase cycle, but um, five people really wanted to develop their skills on coaching. Okay, well, we actually are offering them a very detailed coaching trajectory. Mm -hmm. You do that, you invest in that, they value it enormously. So you can see that as a part also of your well-being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do that as a team, so it makes the bonding, so it has a lot of positive uh, aspects too. So where do you as employer invest your money? It doesn't always need to be purely in the cash aspects, which mm -hmm. have maybe an effect for a week, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but other uh, elements can have a, a much more lasting effect. Yeah, longevity of some, some investments in people makes sense. PJ? I think what's really important there is that um, Every aspect in the reward policy, whether it's on atmosphere, benefits, or cash, has a cost component associated to me. As a first point, of course, what's really important is that um, people via their compensation at the end of the month feel that's the right compensation for the value that they bring to the company. But what also need to be taken into account, and that's something that we do at SD Works a lot, is that if you get a pay increase, if your pay is okay, if your pay is decent and in line with your education level, mm -hmm. the function that you're doing, etc., um, every 10% increase that you're getting doesn't mean that you're also getting 10% happier with your reward proposition. Mm -hmm. So what we then try to do is instead of really focusing only on the compensation part, we also want to focus on the benefits part, but mm -hmm. might be less costly for the company, while relatively seen, much more value for the employees. Mm -hmm. So if you then can take the benefits that you're giving um, other benefits like pensioning, uh, pension insurances, medical insurances, mm -hmm. or the atmosphere part, extra days of vacation that are much more valid to the employees, then you're actually taking benefits from both sides, less costly for the company as a whole, and relatively seen also better for the employees. Do we also take that on the employee side in terms of um, relative value, let's say, in the supermarket, the buying power of the employee, whether we actually compensate so that the salary that they get no. allows them to provide for their families? In my opinion, that's a very important part mm -hmm. because, um, and that's what I alluded to it in the first mm -hmm. topic, saying that um, the compensation that you get needs to be fair and needs to be correct. Mm -hmm. That also means that year after year, 
when indexes are increasing, we just had in 2022 mm-hmm. a huge index um, throughout Europe. You have to make sure that um, people don't uh, or can maintain the same standard of living. Mm-hmm. How do we do that? That is the works is that through our annual salary review cycle that mm-hmm. follows the performance cycle. So uh, every year, throughout the year, quarter after quarter, we evaluate and we have a discussion with the finance team on uh, what are the increases in consumer prices in every country. Mm-hmm. And we also compare the information to objective information that we are getting uh, from from the European Commission, for mm-hmm. example, on what are the expected salary increase for next yes. year. And we at the works, we have a, a basic rule there. The minimum of the two, we compensate for. Mm-hmm. So over the longer term, years after years after years, we can make sure that our employees, they benefit from uh, being a minimum at par. Eh? So mm-hmm. without their evaluations taking into account, they, they stay uh, close to the market and they are uh, always able to buy the same uh, basket mm-hmm. of goods. We're picking now on a very particular topic, financial health, but basically we're back in podcast one. We're talking about strategy and clear-cut principles to actually move along and ensure that the organization can prosper and that people can prosper and thrive as well, right? Yes. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing that we're talking about. And if that's so clear-cut, as you say, then I think there are a lot of learnings in here also for the listeners on how they can do that in their own companies. Yeah, exactly. And even... Linking to the first podcast about um, a strategy, strategy is very important, but also objectivity. In reward, it's really important that you go away from, I've heard this, I can earn this in another company. Evidence. Because evidence is really important. The grass is always green yes. at the other side. You need to step away from that while also making sure that you still listen to the employees, mm-hmm. of course, because if people are telling you something, if it comes in once, twice, three times, at a certain moment, what they are telling is reality. Mm-hmm. So you need to listen, but you need to make sure that you're still having that objective mind. Once you have a strategy and the strategy works, you stick to it and you try to be 1% better every day. Mm-hmm. To be 1% better every day, it's about sticking to it, but it's about listening to what are the needs and how can we do it in the best possible way. Another example was... Um, People wanted to have more ownership on that atmosphere part. So we Mm -hmm. created a fun at work Mm -hmm. uh, budget. It's a fixed budget by employee that every country Mm -hmm. can uh, spend. And there are ways to spend it. It's not management who decides how to spend it. It's completely bottom up. It is the employees, representative of the employees who decide how to spend it. Not in one big event, but in many smaller types of events so that yeah, it's not just sports, it's also culture and you bring people together uh, Mm -hmm. across teams. Um, and I think that's important. So yeah. the job never stops, but it's in the 1% better uh, everyday spirit. That's important. And I think that it's important to understand that we listen. Are there also times that we have to say no? Many times. Many times. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, um, a lot of people come up with great ideas that in first instance that you would like to implement, but then if you start looking at it and go it into deeper conversation with other people, you realize that it's not the best thing to do because it has second impact, a third impact. And then you have to go back to the first person and say, this is not something yeah. that we can do for these reasons, not always financial reasons. But I can imagine that it can be one person desire maybe that we can scale to 10 or 100 people, but we are 7,500 at the moment. Yeah. That is scalability here something that's at play as well? Like, can we scale it at all? Yeah, scalability. Well, for me, important there is that you have you have your reward strategy. Mm-hmm. That's the pole star, let's say. But you also have to take into the local nuances, and yes. the local nuances is really important and something that you shouldn't rule out and really listen to. For example, your reward strategy can talk about total cash, and total cash is a sum of, of mm-hmm. base and variable. But if you are then talking to people in, for example, the Nordics, where that variable is much less mm-hmm. um, baked into yes. their culture, then it, it has an absolutely no sense to start pushing variable to those companies or countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, another example is cars in Belgium. Mm-hmm. Why do we have so many company cars? Because we are taxed so heavily and it's more beneficial to have a company car in yes. Belgium total cost wise. Yes. Thank you very much. I remember, I think I'm going to stick with three things. First of all, very important evidence-based reward. Let's stick with data and sources. Let's try to make things objective and transparent. Very important thing there. Let's stick with principles of the strategy as well. Set out and also on financial health. Last but not least, let's try to find a balance between the total cost to keep a company sane and healthy and try to find out also how we can say yes 
to the feedback that we get from audiences. And we have to say no a lot of times, but to the things that we can say yes, let's say yes by all means. Thank you. Thank you.